try to save you a bunch of time here. Uh, OLED and QLED aren't just TV marketing terms. There are a ton of TV marketing terms. Uh, they are completely like different ways of making a picture. I think one of them is probably better for your situation. But figuring out which one is usually where a lot of people get totally lost because everybody's trying to sell you something or trying to push their favorite brand. Uh, I spent way too much time researching this stuff. I think partly because I've become obsessed with picture quality, but probably more so because I've made some bad TV purchases in the past because I didn't do my research. So let me lay out what I've learned because honestly, both these technologies I think are really great. They're just great at different things and for different people. So the whole thing comes down to how they actually make the picture. Uh, OLED stands for organic light emitting diode. Um, that doesn't matter. The important part is that every single pixel lights up on its own. No backlight is needed. So there's nothing on the screen is supposed to be black. That pixel just turns off, meaning it's actually black, completely black. And that is where OLED is crazy good. I don't know if you ever noticed, but if you look at black on most TVs that aren't OLED, they have a dark gray when they're trying to show black and your brain interprets them as black. OLED don't do that. My main TV at my house uh, is an LG G2 up on my wall. You guys love to tell me it's too high above my fireplace. Uh, and sometimes I'll pause a movie during a dark scene because I love that stuff. And I can't tell where the screen ends and the bezel begins. And the contrast you get from this, I think is nuts too. Like if you're watching anything with dramatic lighting, um, space movies, noir films, uh, even just like regular TV shows with like moody-ish cinematography, it looks way more cinematic than I think most people expect. My wife um, makes fun of me because I will like pause stuff and then rewatch scenes just to sort of pixel peep at how good they look. And because there's no big backlight system behind the panel, OLEDs are usually stupidly thin. My G2, which is now three years old, uh, is basically just uh, hanging there on my wall like a piece of art. And if you're into gaming at all, OLED response time is basically instant. Um, almost no motion blur, no weird artifacting when things move fast on the screen. Um, I'm not like a serious hardcore gamer like a lot of people are, but it is very noticeable when I do game. Um, OLED, not perfect though. It used to have this problem, that's kind of the reputation that's plagued it, where it just wasn't bright enough. Uh, for a lot of rooms with windows, you know, direct sunlight coming in. Uh, my living room gets absolutely blasted with light in the afternoon. South facing windows, not much tree coverage, the whole deal. And for years I avoided OLED I figured I'd spend all that money just to have a dim screen half the day. But they figured this out with newer panel types. So my G2 used something called W OLED, uh, which basically adds white pixels that handle the brightness while sort of other pixels focus on colors. It's bright enough that even with my ridiculous afternoon sun situation, I can still very clearly and easily see what's on the screen without squinting. Now there's also QD OLED, which is something totally different with quantum dots, but the end result uh, is even brighter colors and better peak brightness while keeping those perfect blacks. Um, Sony uses this in their A95L, and the first time I saw it in person, this is not a joke, it's a little more embarrassing, uh, I spent a good 20 minutes like staring at it. It's really impressive. But it ain't the newest kid on the block. The newest kid on the block is tandem OLED. They literally stack two OLED layers on top of each other. It's expensive, um, but it gets even brighter without losing efficiency. It's still like relatively newish tech, but it's probably where everything is headed. Um, the one thing with OLED that still makes people nervous, aside from the brightness, uh, is burning. I see it in the comments of TV videos all the time. Here's the caveat. If you leave the same image on the screen for hours and hours, days and months, you might get some ghosting. Uh, modern OLEDs have all kinds of protection built in. They shift pixels around, run maintenance cycles, all that stuff. I've had my G2 for about three years. And I don't like watch news with a ticker all the time, but I have never had an issue. But if you're planning to use your TV as a computer monitor, or leaving news channels on 24 seven, uh, bear it in mind. Uh, QLED, it's a totally different technology, even though its name sounds really similar. It's basically a really good LCD with quantum dot layers that makes colors more vibrant and allows for insane brightness levels. Uh, the key thing is it still uses LED backlighting with local dimming zones. Just depends on how many local dimming zones there are. And when I say crazy brightness, uh, I mean it. Uh, good QLEDs can get over 2,000 nits of brightness. Higher end sets can go over 4,000, which is painfully bright if you're in a dark room. In a bright room, I think it's pretty much of a game changer. And if you're in a bright room, 
It looks beautiful. They handle glare and reflections usually better than OLED, and colors still pop even with ambient light. Uh, QLED gives you way more options price-wise too. You can get a really decent one for like under 600 bucks, or go premium with mini LED backlighting uh, and get performance that's really close to OLED in a lot of content. Uh, no burn-in worries either, which is nice if that person who just wants to buy a TV and not think about that downside. I know that's why a lot of people avoid OLED, but not perfect. The downside is that backlight system. Since it can't turn individual pixels completely off like OLED can, the blacks will just never be as deep. Um, on cheap QLED models, you'll sometimes see bleeding uh, around bright objects on dark backgrounds. It's called a halo effect. If you have one of these TVs, pause it, and you can sort of see what that looks like. Uh, expensive ones are way better with local dimming. Uh, they mostly fix this, but it's still not quite OLED level. Also, viewing angles are generally not as good. Uh, sit too far off to the sides and the colors can look washed out or shift. Not a huge deal if you're sitting in center, something to consider. And as you go on the higher end, um, the viewing angles do tend to get better. So before I get into like what display you should buy, I do wanna take a break and thank this video sponsor, Printful. Uh, I've been seeing them everywhere and I think what they're doing is genius. So you know there's always some trend blowing up right now, open your phone, go on TikTok and you will see it, whether it's politics, some new meme, my kids are obsessed with six, seven, an Italian brain rot. I swear if I hear one more like tra la la, tra la lo, uh, I'm gonna lose it. Um, but people immediately want to buy stuff related to said meme. Uh, by the time most companies catch on and make products, the moment's like way past. Uh, Printful basically lets you skip all of that. You can throw a design together when something's trending, list it online, and they will print and ship it when people order. There's no buying thousands of shirts hoping they'll sell, no storage dealing with shipping boxes in your garage. They literally just handle like all of that mess. I understand if you're skeptical, especially when it comes to quality, because a lot of print on demand could be hit or miss, but they're actually working with huge companies like Coca-Cola and MTV, uh, so not messing around. Plus they print locally instead of shipping sort of everything overseas, which I thought was nice. I think the coolest part though, is that it costs nothing to start. You can literally test this out right now with like zero risk. Hook it up to your Shopify store or Etsy, whatever, and then just like see what happens. Worst case scenario, nothing sells and you are out zero dollars. Um, I'm not saying everyone should quit their day job, but if you've got a creative ideas or you've already building an audience, it might be worth messing around with it. Maybe you've got the next trung trung trungs a whore shirt idea that you're thinking about making. Uh, link is down below if you wanna check it out. And honestly, if you've got that idea, you could be making yourself thousands or tens of thousands uh, very quickly. So again, links down below, back to this place. So generally that's technologies, but how do you pick which one? If picture quality is your main thing and you control lighting situation, um, like if you have dedicated movie setup or you mostly watch in the evening, 100 out of 100 times, it's OLED. Uh, that contrast and color accuracy, it is really impressive. If your TV needs to work in a bright room all day or you're trying to stay under certain budgets, uh, QLED makes way more sense practical. You'll get great brightness, vibrant colors, don't worry about any special care. For actual models, if you're going OLED, just for a good price point, these are kind of older models. Um, the LG C3 or C4 series is where I'd start looking. So you get like 95% of what my G2 does for way less money. If you wanna go premium, uh, the Sony A95L with QD OLED, I think is probably one of the best all around TVs you can get right now. Uh, and the newer Sony, the Bravia 8 Mark II, is also really impressive. Samsung S95 series, probably some of those ridiculous colors I have ever seen. Borderline too vibrant uh, at times. Uh, for QLED, Samsung's Q90C or Q95C are really solid picks that balance performance and price as well. The F series is obviously the flagship. But I think the C is just a really good combination of technology and value. If you need to spend less, uh, the QN85C is still pretty good, especially if you mess around with the settings a little bit. And these are just some examples though. There are tons of other great options depending on what size you need, sort of what you wanna spend. But the, the main thing is figuring out what technology fits your situation better. And I think the bottom line is, stop overthinking this. Um, I spent way too long going down rabbit holes, reading reviews, watching comparison videos. Uh, and honestly, both technologies are legitimately great right now. And I'm sure in the comments, you'll see people vehemently screaming mini LED or saying OLED or nothing. But the difference between a good OLED and a good QLED 
is not going to make or break your movie nights anymore. Pick OLED if you want the absolute best picture quality and you control the lighting a little bit. Some of them can still get pretty bright. Pick QLED if you need something uh, bright for a family room, you're watching your budget. Uh, either way, you're getting a TV that is going to look way better than whatever you're replacing, I'm guessing. And I'm sitting here with my LG G2 and I still get that little dopamine hit every time I sort of turn it on and see those perfect blacks. Would I be miserable if they QN90C in a bright room? Absolutely not. The tech has gotten that good. Just pick the one that fits your situation and your wallet and actually enjoy watching stuff on it instead of second guessing your choice. Trust me, you'll be way happier that way.